our world has seemingly forever, at least for the last several hundred years, but possibly always, been run primarily on economic considerations. Those with money get what they want, those without often even are denied life. Why? Today, this pattern is clearly exemplified in the World Economic Forum and their decision to take the world down their rabbit hole. And what gave them the right to do so? Money, it seems. Money makes the world go round, kind of, in a fashion. In this video, I would like all of us to ask, rich and not, if money is the intelligent thing to be leading us. I am not attacking. I see all as blameless, but I see many other things also, and all interests me immensely. Money is blind. It seeks only its own continuity and growth, which is what this new world order new liberal order, great reset, or whatever name you wish to call it, is all about the solidification of all power into never changing hands. China is greatly familiar with this style of governance, and money, it seems, has capacity to make it so. Can I ask a question? Why is intelligence not lighting our path before money? Why do we not act intelligently for the benefit of our own species? and for our planet. Do we ever know what intelligence even means? We never seem to question what we are doing. We only ever seek to act along the same continual line of apparent progress towards a conceptual future. And our actions involve scholastic competition, battle, wars, and terrible suffering for our species. When do we arrive? We are always rushing towards a future when does the promised land get here? Why do we not seek happiness before profits? Why, as a race, are we only ever concerned with battling each other, and so with controlling the lives of others, that I may decide more, that I may sit on the golden thrones of life? What is so very wrong with us? Have you seen how imbalanced this world is? Trillions upon trillions sits rotting in tax havens and the child is dying from starvation once every five seconds. There goes another one. Why is wealth the most important of all things to us? Why do we not place care for each other higher? Why are we so selfish, so self-interested, and so uninterested in everything else in life and beyond? I don't know the answer, but I can see we certainly are. Has anyone else ever noticed this universe we have all been born into? Have you seen the limitless space? and the billions of stars of a night sky? Have you seen the fathomless oceans and the myriad of life? Have you marveled at all in your life at where you are? Have you seen where you are? Or are you so self-consumed with the inner thinking nature of your psychological self and becoming something in this dreadfully distorted and corrupted world that you have never even truly spent a few cursory minutes looking at where you are and who are you. I know what you are, you number gathering machines of measurement, thirsty tongues for power and control, but have you ever asked who you are or where you came from or why you live this way. We are not educated to ask questions. We are educated to follow authority and to only accept without questions. It is easier for society to operate this way. And it is easier for us to live this way. Only it is not safe. You know where all this thirst for more, for success, for becoming something comes from? The classroom structure of your childhood. Get to the top. Live in memory. Thought is memory, by the way. Compete against all, never cooperate or help, and do all of this under the watchful eye of an authority keeping you right every step of the way. We are programmed to this nonsensical approach to life, which is going to destroy us and our beautiful world. The richest man alive today is seeking to travel deep into space. Has anyone else noticed that we are already as far out into the depths of space as we could ever be. Does anyone ever question a single thing? Or do we know it all? The tragedy of the lives of humanity 
is not the unfathomable sorrow we suffer at our own hands from our own stupidities. The tragedy is what we fail to see from moment to moment, every moment. The hurt we cause each other perpetually is a symptom of a fact, and that fact is that we are totally blind. A mind full of the past, ever building into its own self-conceived future, is not a mind which is alive. It is a machine of competitive, therefore divisive and conflict-causing capitalist progress. Why, perhaps, our world is becoming more and more centralized, more ordered, more machine. A mind ever occupied has no ability to see anything other than its own occupations. And this is exactly how we came to lose the quality of love for each other. You see, love is not between man and woman, or as you see fit these days. Love is not found in the human mind. What we call love is an attachment, seeking security, seeking continuity, and therefore fear. And fear and love are surely never found together. Love is outside of the human mind. Love does not belong to the human mind. Although the human mind may come into the light of love, love can never be made a possession. Love is a quality belonging to this living creative universe. It exists only in this present moment, which is the only moment of creation. Love belongs to creation. Our minds are the repository of the old. They are the past, memory-based and educated into us. The old past, memories, and the life-giving force of creation can never coexist, and so mankind has lost ability to relate to creation. And as creation is the home of love, mankind has lost ability to love. Mankind lives seeking progress into a future by building on what he has already achieved in his past. The present moment means nothing to such a mind, and so we betray our lives, for the only moment we can ever act in is now, and the only real and true quality of life is here and now. The future is a modified continuity of the past in ideological format, and the past is already dead, although we live within the field of this dead, which is the past arising in us in the form of thoughts, knowledge from previous experiences, reacting continuously to stimulus in our present moment. In this way, our present moment is ever being coloured, corrupted and distorted by our past continually psychological arising experiences. Another life is possible, but it needs another mind to live it. A capitalist, growth-seeking, success-worshipping, self-interested, competitive and loveless mind may do very well in terms of accumulating massive quantities of numbers. It may live in a dozen palaces, own private islands, fly in jet planes and sail in billion dollar yachts. But such a mind will never come to meet love. A camel more easily passes through the eye of a needle. Love comes into being when the mind is without such life-commanding inner programmed movements selfishly ever seeking more. And love is what will transform the lives of humanity. But for this possibility to ever arise for our lost souls, we must end that which now occupies the space. The inner mind we have, the societally programmed, brainwashed mind of knowledge, knowing what is, but never understanding what what is, is, or how what is, is. We have never come to an understanding of our lives and deaths for ourselves, by ourselves. We accept authorities, and so we live our lives in the dark shadows of ignorance of what we truly are, or where we truly are, and of what even constitutes being alive. The mind of mankind today has lost its soul. It has gained the world, but lost its soul in true biblical form. Can we ever again make the connection? Of course we can. The universe yet exists, and the universe exists in absolute functional order. And we can find order 
when we once again move away from the disorder, the patterned, programmed disorder we live within, within our psychological state, and once again come into relationship with this living universe. And that can only happen now, for now is where the universe lives. It recognizes no dead past, nor does this universe travel for a better future. Our universe has arrived and its arrival is ever in this present living moment. Can we arrive also to meet it? To do so, we need surely to die to how we have previously lived. We cannot continue living the way we have done and meet the loving presence of this universe, for our way of life denies any potential to meet this present moment. We live in conceptual future and remembered past, unless a man be born again and all of that. This is the only important issue our race faces. Although, of course, today, thanks to the current mind of self-interest, of greed, of power-seeking, ambition, and domination over the lives of others. We live, all of us, with many other pressing and dangerous issues. Does anyone listening to this video hold the leisure time to bring to their minds an inner revolution? This takes metal. It takes true pioneers, for you are being asked to go where few have previously ventured, to your own first-hand understanding of your life, of what and where you are. Not in words and images, not in stories told. A strange question indeed, but only so because our education has failed completely. We have not been educated to come to a first-hand understanding of anything about ourselves or about our lives. We are completely impoverished with relationship to truth. Without asking such questions, we will continue to repeat the way we have lived, and we will continue to live in a very strange world indeed. In the time you listened to the few words in this short film, one child every five seconds died of starvation. So for 10 minutes of this film, 120 children have dropped dead. Likely, even more unneeded resources entered the gates of our tax havens. I am not judging at all. I am illustrating how our divided mind of humanity is currently employed and occupied and bringing us to the understanding that the change we need see in this world is within ourselves. Our occupied, self-seeking, and therefore selfish, conflicted, divisive, ambitious, success-oriented, competitive mind is what has led us here in our constant progress towards our never-ending future. Can we bring all this to an end and start to live for today? Unfortunately, we have been accustomed or trained or accepted that we cannot solve these problems ourselves. We must go to somebody, either the priest or the psychologist or the latest guru, with all their fanciful dress and absurdities. And we, we are so trained and conditioned that we cannot dissolve our own inward struggles, problems and anxieties. That's why you're all sitting here, probably, hoping that I would help to solve your problems hoping that we'll be, have new kind of enlightenment. You know, that's one of the strange things. Enlightenment isn't, cannot be given by another. It's not a matter of time. It's not a matter of evolution, of gradual growth, moving from one step to another step, higher and higher and higher till ultimately you come to something called enlightenment. That's a good old tradition 
a trap for the human mind. That which is eternal, which is nameless, is beyond time. And you cannot approach it through time, through gra gradation, through gradual process. So we must ask, why is it that our minds and our hearts and our own brain, which is the brain of humanity, because your brain is not your brain, it's the brain that has evolved through millennia, and that brain has followed a certain path, certain roots, certain attitudes and so on. And as the brain is the most important factor in our life, can that brain change itself completely? That's a central question. You understand? We are thinking together, you are not listening to me. We are like two friends talking together. There is nobody else but two friends. And I hope we are like that in this gathering. You and I are sitting quietly in a comfortable chair or, uncom or in walking along the wall in a wall and talking over this seriously. That is, can the brain, which is evolved through time, has set a pattern for itself, a movement in which it has grown gradually from the most primitive, most backward to an extraordinary brain that we have now. And that brain has lived always in this pattern. You understand, Marco? Of fear, greed, violence, brutality, never being satisfied, pursuit of sex, pleasure, and you know, all the rest of it. That's our brain. Can that brain transform itself? You understand my question? Because the brain is the most important thing in our life. Brain, then the heart, physical heart, and all the nervous responses which the brain controls holds and so on, can that thing transform itself? 